I got to go out there today and I got to meet everybody's need. Instead, it's just saying one yes to cross the street one time to be curious enough to respond. And that one yes can lead to another yes, sure. But don't try to get three yeses ahead of yourself, yeah. just the one. Yeah, I'd like to add to that because I think that's right. You, you do have to see that you have a role to play, you know, in, in loving your neighbor. You're not alone. You don't have to do it alone. Welcome to the Hope in Real Life podcast with Jason Gore. Our team is passionate and committed to bringing you more hope in the everyday, real areas of your life. If this conversation and content is valuable for you, please do us a favor. Like, subscribe, and even share. You never know how valuable it could be to share a little bit of hope with someone else. Let's get the conversation started. What's going on, Hope in Real Life family? We have a episode this week that I know that our world and our communities desperately need. Um, guests that uh, actually are my neighbors. And uh, yes, man, are. as good a folk as you'd ever want to be around. Uh, welcome to the show, Sean and Heather Sullivan. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having us, Jason. Yeah. Why don't we just start out by, look, I'm sure we'll get into this at some point in the show, like what you guys do for a living and all that kind of stuff. But that's not really why you're here. Why you're here is we're actually just talking about neighboring. You guys are just good people. But why don't you just introduce yourselves to the audience and to our listeners and talk about yourself for a minute. Okay, great. You go first. All right. Um, I'm Heather. Uh, we have two kids. We have two boys, uh, teenagers. One of them just graduated from high school. Um, the job that I get to do that you said we'll talk about later is one of the most fun things I could imagine doing with my life. Uh, I'll save it. I used to be a high school teacher. Uh, a lot of that plays into who I became as a person later in life. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, well, we met in college, and then I did youth ministry for like 10 years, um, and then got out of that, went in the coffee industry, and had a lot of fun doing that stuff. And then uh, Jason Gore invited me to come work at Hope, be a part of what we were doing in our community in yep. Garner, um, which was just kind of creating this outpost for reaching people and, and for creating communities there. So I jumped into small group uh, leadership there, and that was a blast. And um, just over the time, have seen more and more things that have happened in our community because of the groups, because of the people involved, including what we have now, which is a campus there uh, where we're reaching people and creating more community. So it's been a really fun ride. And we did get the opportunity along the way to move into the neighborhood intentionally uh, next to Jason and Diana Gore, who have just been fantastic, and we've been able to be on mission in our own neighborhood together. So yeah. it's been cool. So the purpose of this whole podcast is to really bring hope to the everyday moments of everyone's lives. Um, where we live, we spend a significant amount of time. And so I'd love to ask the both of you, like, why is it important to be a good neighbor? Well, when you're talking about the need for people to have hope in real life, um, it's really your neighbors, it's really the people that are going to bring that to you. And if you don't understand what that means, and if you don't understand the importance of you being one of those people for other people, people aren't just going to kick over a rock and find hope. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to kick over a rock and find a solution to the problem or find a connection or a relationship that they need. It's going to come from somebody else being willing to linger long enough, be curious enough, hang out long enough, and invite people into their space. Yeah, so. yeah and I think it's... It's mutually beneficial, you know. I mean, when we're when we're being a good neighbor, um, it opens the doors, you know, for a lot more connection, a lot more trust, and then you find that people are are being good neighbors back to you too. So it really works out well in our communities. Um, was thinking a lot about our kids, though. You know, we're just in this generation where um, right now they're in a generation these digital natives where their sense of community is very digital. And that's not bad. It's just it, it needs the social, it needs the interactive. So I know it's important that my kids see me walking across the street, talking to neighbors and making real connections in real life. Otherwise, you know, they just might have their head down the rest of their lives. Yeah, it's interesting. <clears throat> we because it, hopefully if you listen, if you're someone's listening to this podcast, like they're at least excited about what does it mean to find hope mm -hmm. in our lives. I think a lot of times we know there's something inside of us that says, hey, we want to bring hope to other people around us, or we want to find this purpose that's bigger than ourselves. Yeah. You think, what the heck am I supposed to do? How can I figure this thing out? When really there's, mm. there's actually people that live right next door to you that most likely 
need hope. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that we overlook. It's like it doesn't have to be any more difficult than just walking next door, talking to someone, building a relationship, and figuring out how you can help meet a need and make sure they know they're cared for. Uh, so there's a there was a study in 2018 that showed 57 percent of Americans said they knew some of their neighbors. Um, I'm shocked. I guess that would mean if I do the math really quickly, what does that mean? 43% maybe possibly don't know any of their neighbors. Just out of curiosity, how many of your neighbors do the both of you know? Well, the neighbors, if you're talking about just the people who live right around the house that we live in, which is commonly what people think of when they think of the word neighbor, um, I'd love to challenge that thought in a minute. But um, just that answer is I know who all of them are. Know them deeply. I he probably knows our neighbors who live right around us more deeply <laughs> I am than the I do. Extrovert, so uh, yeah. He's an extrovert, yeah. and it's it's a lot of men who live right around us, um, and including to the right of us. There's a, a single young guy who's got a few roommates who live there, um, and so Sean's done a great job of getting to know him. Um, but I know who all of them are. I know enough about their life to know probably what they're all about, what it is that they do for a living, and I would say even what they care about. Um, that just comes from being observant. Yeah. But if you want to. Yeah, just for the immediate neighbors, man, like uh, I do know them all. Um, and I was challenged a little while back, actually reading a book that we're going to m- mention later. Um, just that, you know, you got these neighbors right around you. Do you even know the names of the people to your left, your right, across the street, diagonal? Do you even know those? And if you don't know their names, like that's the starting point. You you don't know anything. If you don't know their names, you're, you're just getting by. So um, that was big. So I just started to try to get to know each of their names. And very quickly, it's like you said, Jason, you don't have to try hard. Um, you don't have to make it into some big mountainous thing. You just start small like that. And then it happens. It just works out. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool getting to know, you know, the, the people right around us. So I do know every, I have a cheat though on my left side, I just have a pond, so I haven't met every turtle in the pond. There's some turtles and some geese over there. Yeah, definitely. A lot. Uh, um, Sean, since you're talking about this, what qualities do you think makes a good neighbor? Uh, I think I wrote a couple down that I was thinking about this. Really, just basic stuff. So friendly, just being friendly from the start, you know, put that friendly foot forward, Um, being respectful. um, That goes a long way when you're talking about neighbors, Um, boundaries. Um, you know, if you're going to throw a party, make sure they know if there's going to be 50 cars on the street, make sure that you've told them that that's going on. Um, and then I'd say even helpful, um, you know, helpful. That doesn't by chance have anything to do with the single guy that lives next to you that has three (laughs) other roommates. And and maybe has parties occasionally. He does. You know, young, young adults need to socialize, um, in the backyard to where the whole neighborhood can hear it. Yes. Um, but we've got. You know, we've got neighbors around us who are able to help each other in different ways. And so just in the four neighbors around us, it's like we've all helped each other somehow. And a yeah. uh, neighbor across the street, Billy, he's got this really good talent of smoking pork shoulders. And so he does it and then he starts taking it to neighbors around him. And it's, yeah. it's really kind. It's really it's really generous. But also there's been times where I've had like a truck repair I don't know how to do anything with. And he has experience in that. And so yeah. he's come over. He's helped me fix my truck before. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, when you, <clears throat> obviously, uh, you know, never, you guys are our neighbors, which is how I happen to know that um, you guys are good neighbors. Uh, but let's talk for a minute just about, Heather, you alluded to this earlier, how maybe our neighbor isn't just someone that lives next to us. Um, you know, we're all a part of a community. Um, a bunch of individual disconnected people running around doing their own things. While it might seem like it's best for me as an individual, it might not be best for the holistic community uh, as a whole. And so why why don't you just talk about that? What were you getting at a moment ago when you said you'd like to challenge the thought of a neighbor just being somebody that lives next to you? Yeah, well, I think that's a great place to start. And it's an important place to make sure that you are connected to the people who live directly around you, for sure. Um, But that sometimes can oversimplify the concept Um, Because what if the people around you don't seem to have some need that you're, you know, showing up to meet? Or what if they don't seem so hopeless? Um, Mm -hmm. And you think that it's as simple as that. Or what if you live on a farm or your neighbor is the turtle on a pond? Um, Does that mean that you're excluded from having to care or from thinking about yourself as a neighbor? (laughs) I just had a picture of what's the movie with Tom Hanks and he's on a boat and he's got his volleyball, Wilson? Wilson. 
Wilson. Wilson. What's the movie? Yeah. Castaway. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Castaway. Cast- mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was his neighbor. That, <laughs> okay, that's that was um, dramatically. But his a lot of times we're looking out and we're thinking about our neighbors as the other people when we are the neighbor. And so I think when you ask, you know, what what makes a great neighbor? Probably the the characteristic that stands out the most if you really want to show up in the world as a great neighbor is curiosity. Yeah. You have to literally be curious about the people who are around you. Truthfully, your cashier at the grocery store is your neighbor. Everywhere you go, there you are, and you mm-hmm. are a neighbor in every environment that you're in. And so if you're curious about people's lives, and then you're willing to be present and hang out long enough, um, and sometimes that means in that five minutes and never again, that's still your neighbor. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's the showing up and willing to be curious. And then when you see something, be intentional in your response. Yeah. And there's, there's power in that keep showing up kind of thing. Like yeah. if you go to, if you got a neighborhood Starbucks and you, you know, you go through that drive through line, you're going to keep seeing these people and then they're going to start talking to you and you're going to make more connections, you know? And we, I know that, uh, the young lady at the Starbucks very close to our house that, you know, one day she just kind of clicked with her and she said, wait, do you go to this church? I was like, yes, we go to that. I go to that church. And then she said, I was taught guitar lessons by one of your guitar players at the church. I was like, wow, that's so cool. So it struck this new kind of depth of relationship just because, you know, just the consistency of trying to make sure that I was intentional in going there to see her instead of just going anywhere. Yeah. Hope in Real Life family, I want to take a moment and let you know about a resource that we have for you for your own personal development, spiritual enrichment, and really a way for you to find a bit more hope in real life. We have a tool for you called the Hope in Real Life app. It offers things like parenting tips, financial resources, marriage insights. Uh, If you're looking for it, there's even Bible reading plans in there. And there's a community where you can even share prayer requests and know that someone is praying for you for whatever it is that you have going on in your life. It's available right now in the Apple App Store or in Google Play. You can search Hope in Real Life in both stores, or you can use the download link that is in the show notes. Remember, tomorrow can be better than today, and hope is possible even in real life. Uh, I, I know a lot. Of, <clears throat> all of our listeners aren't necessarily Christian or interested in following the ways of Jesus, but I think it's important just to highlight this. So there's, there's a place in the Bible where Jesus is asked, "Hey, like, what's the greatest commandment?" And he says, um, "The most important thing is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So love God with mm-hmm. everything that you have." But he said, "The second is like it, is to love your neighbor as yourself." And there's a I think the reason behind that is because that actually helps the world (laughs) interact and and experience life the way that God originally designed, right? Everybody loving each other. But then Jesus is asked, well, who's my neighbor? He's like immediately looking for, okay, then what is it that I have to do? And whether you, you know, follow the ways of Jesus or not, I mean, he's a pretty important person throughout the course of human history. Mm -hmm. People still talk about him today. So there's got to be some strength to what he said. And so he tells this story of um, someone who's hurt and on the side of the road, and he tells the story of multiple people that pass by him for other reasons, but one person actually stops and does take care of him. And um, Jesus imposes the question, so I'll just ask you, who is the neighbor to this person? And it was obviously the person that met the needs. And there's nothing that indicates that that individual lived close by to the other person. So how do you think a story like that plays out for us or for a listener in their everyday life? Like, what does it mean to be a neighbor to our community? What are ways we can do that? So I'm going to counter or add to your story with a story. Um, so recently I was asked, how, how is it that you don't get overwhelmed by um, this thought that honestly weighs on me pretty heavily all the time? that people are in need of, whether they admit it or not, a good neighbor. Um, They need people to to show up and to be neighbors. And truthfully, without even really realizing it, I thought, well, when I go on a walk, which I do every day, um, when I go on a walk and I'm passing by the houses um, that are in our neighborhood, without even really trying to think about it, I'm, I'm thinking about the people who live in those houses. And for some of them, I know more of their story than others. But then there's others where you know a little bit if you've paid any attention at all. 
And so that's sort of where this thought of be curious about your neighbors and think about what's going on in their lives so that you can show up so that when you do notice, wait a minute, there was an older person that lived in that house and there's 20 cars lined up outside the house right now. Something must be going on. Um, there's an ambulance that just pulled up over there um, or there's a moving truck or, you know, like noticing these things allows you the opportunity to pray for, to show up for, um, to ask questions about. And in that story that you talked about, when Jesus was sharing that story about who makes a good neighbor, truthfully, the person who ended up helping the guy who was hurt was the one who was willing to walk across the street. Yeah. So it was proximity, it was curiosity, and then at the end of that story, when he's asked, who was the good neighbor, he responds, the one who showed mercy. Yeah. And so your proximity and your curiosity leads you to the opportunity to show compassion, and that is your choice. And once you know that your neighbor is in need, it's on you at that point to be intentional and to show up. Um, and sometimes you will and you'll get it right. And sometimes you won't because you'll feel too busy. And that's where I personally have to say, where am I not making room in my life to show up for people in a way that they might need? And can that be overwhelming? It can if you look at it as I got to go out there today and I got to meet everybody's need. Instead, it's just saying one yes to cross the street one time to be curious enough to respond. And that one yes can lead to another yes, sure. But don't try to get three yeses ahead of yourself, yeah. just the one. Yeah, I'd like to add to that because I think that's right. You, you do have to see that you have a role to play, you know, in, in loving your neighbor. You're not alone. You don't have to do it alone. Um, and I, even in the story that you're talking about, like the guy writes a blank check, basically, but he tells other people, take care of this, take care of yeah. this guy. Um, but I would say like something as simple as if you have a soccer team that your kid's on and somebody needs a ride to, to share, to say, they need a ride, I can't do it, and then work diligently to find out who on the team can. I mean, these, they have these uh, team snaps and these chats that they can do on these, these kind of groups and teams. And if you just put it out there, let the need be out there. And so we can use social media, we can use different digital tools that we have to put needs out there. And you see it all the time, somebody advocating for somebody else and saying, they need a GoFundMe. Like, yeah. This, this, this tragic thing has happened or they've kept this really deep need and, and they take some ownership in it, but they, they don't keep it to themselves. They, they share it with the community around, give them an opportunity. Yeah, I think, um, so and we're talking a lot right now about meeting needs, which is an, an aspect of being a good neighbor. I think it's important for our listeners to realize too, like being a good neighbor isn't just about meeting needs. Like sometimes it's just creating community and creating hope. Mm -hmm. We lived... Um, my wife and I at one point actually lived with another family in a house in downtown Raleigh, and um, it was an incredibly diverse neighborhood. And we're like, man, how are we going to connect with folks? How do we build relationships in a, in a spot where we're a lot different than a lot of the people that live here? And so um, once a month, we just would throw parties. And so we would do things like I'd just bring our pig cooker over. I'd cook a pig. We let everybody know the day before around, you know, up and down the streets around us and say, hey, we're cooking a pig. We're going to have more food than we can eat. Sounds amazing. Uh, we're going to have other things in the cooler. And so if you just want to show up and maybe you just don't know who's going to show up and like things happen, like folks showed up that we never would have met, that we build, built relationships with that never would have happened, um, which sometimes did, but oftentimes didn't lead to needs that we, you know, had any way or felt calling to meet. Mm -hmm. Um, it led to people being passed out on our front porch that we had no idea who they were and how long they were going to be there. But, um, but I mean, sometimes being in, it's not just about meeting needs. Like, I think we forget sometimes like, no, it's, it's just a good idea to slow down and have fun. Yeah. Right. And invite other people into that. Everybody's busy. Everybody's got pressure in life, but man, every now and then, like, let's just get together with the people around us and have a good time. Yeah. It's worth it. It's good. Um, <clears throat> let's talk for a moment, uh, Maybe just to keep it on the fun side, have you guys ever had any experience with um, maybe a bad neighbor? Any stories you want to tell there? Not next door yeah. necessarily. <laughs> no. I had, if I had one, did you have one? Uh, I have a story. Yeah, about um, so in the house that we live in now, one day I was home. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. Working. I know where yep. this is going. And um, there was a neighbor who um, attempted to break into my house in the middle of the day by smashing the front window of my house with a brick. <laughs> I would say that qualifies as not so great That's of a neighbor. A um, yeah. And the neighbor who cooks the pork 
came over like yelling rescue whatever as it turns out she had some some needs she was needs some medication and she didn't have it and um she felt like she was actually helping me by coming over and trying to get into the house um that was I would kind say that of her it was so kind <laughs> um but that was a moment where that didn't feel good yeah. um but a lot of great opportunities came from that after i just want to be clear to our listeners it's not being a good neighbor if you go to someone's house and break out their window right That's a bad yeah. Yeah. Not with a brick anyway. yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> middle of the day sean you got one yeah um so man a few years back I don't know if you remember this, but we're we're in the Raleigh area. We don't get snow a lot, but sometimes we get a good one. And it was, I think, 2010, Christmas. Um, big snow, great time. And so uh, we did the Christmas Day thing with our kids, and we're, we're opening everything. And then we kind of open the curtains to kind of check out what's going on outside. Oh, I was like, and, where is this going? And when we do, our neighbor, who he works for a tow company, and he loves hunting, has a tow truck out in the front of his yard, and there is a headless deer strapped on to the crossbars of the tow truck. Merry Christmas. And it's bleeding out right there in the front yard. How and, old were your kids? Oh, uh, Seth was like four. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And Brady yeah. was one. And so I quickly like shut the curtains back as fast as I could. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to check out the backyard and see how the snow's going there. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was an example of, I mean, it, the guy wasn't intentionally trying to be a bad neighbor, but he wasn't very conscious of, I mean, it's Christmas. So I'm like, I don't know if Rudolph made it. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we're, Rudolph had a bad day. He's like, what is happening? Yeah. But yeah, so that was, that was a weird one. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Hope in Real Life family, we just want to take a moment and let you know about a resource that is available to you. I know a lot of our listeners aren't necessarily active in a church, might not even be a Christian. We are still thankful that you're spending time with us. However, we do get asked regularly, how can we find out more about your church or even just about this Jesus guy? And so if that is you, I want you to know you can tune in to gethope.tv. We have live services on Saturday, 4.15 p.m. and 6 p.m., or on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.15 a.m. Those are Eastern Standard Times. If you can't tune in during those times, we will drop our YouTube link as well as our podcast link down in the show notes. We would love to have you join in with us. Let's keep sharing some hope. Um, hey, let's just sit in this. For, I want to go back. You know, we talked about things, having fun. I think this is going to be, we got folks in the studio. Is this going to air sometime around July 4th? Is that right? Yeah, so let me just say this, man. If you're listening to this and you're like, you know what? How do I be a good neighbor in, in July 4th? Like, throw, have a party. Throw, have a cookout. Invite your neighbors. Get some people together. Most people are looking for something to do. So um, talk to your spouse, right? If you're married, that's a good idea before you throw a big party. Make sure they're on board. Yeah. Um, but get together with some neighbors. Say, hey, we're going to grill some burgers and just hang out for a day. And, and hot start dogs. some conversations. People still eat hot dogs. There's warnings on it, but you still do it. It's cheap. It's great. I read something that said there is, never mind. I'm not going to get into <laughs> it about hot dogs. And we don't, this is not what this episode's about, but uh, hot dogs taste great. Um, they're definitely not good for you, yeah. but that's okay. That's a whole other thing. They're still socially acceptable. Yeah. That's the point. Hey, let's talk resources for a moment. Like say somebody hears this and like, hey, I'm intrigued. I want I want to um, grow in my ability to be a good neighbor, to be able to share hope with other people, to build community around me. Um, what are some resources that you've all stumbled on to help out in this way? Uh, well, I uh, listened to a seminar that was given by a guy named David Docuson, um, and he had developed a neighboring, basically strategy. Um, the book is called, the book he wrote is called Neighborliness. He does seminars. You can be a part of a community no matter where you are, where you jump on Zoom calls, and basically hear ideas. Um, they have um, created an entire um, center around helping the needs of people in, around Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and, but his model, you can take and you can say, what would work where we are? Um, or you can just listen to it and get one idea and try it out. And so I love that because I felt like I could take it and it had, had handles on it and I could do something right away. It's good. Yeah, I mentioned uh, earlier just something that challenged me. It was The Art of Neighboring, a great book that just kind of lays out some basic, easy stuff that Jay you can do. Jay Pathic? Is that yes, right? that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, but I, to me, I, I felt like the greatest resource for me has just been my memory. Like thinking back how people made me feel in my community when they helped out my family, took care of us, or, um, you know, just celebrated 
things together. I mean, we just had, there was a young man who just uh, just graduated eighth grade uh, in our community, not in our family. And a lot of us just showed up and celebrated him because it was a big deal for him. Yeah. And so, you know, that kind of thing, like what's your memories that you have of how people made you feel cared for and special and um, like that you belong here and just lean into that because that's going to drive a lot of what you, you do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> As we get ready to wrap up, I, I just want to kind of throw another another thought out here because this, this actually is something that I'm personally passionate about. Like, how do we help other people just experience and enjoy life? And man, there's so much going on. If you think of young families, they have kids, they play in sports, they go to school. Um, man, I mean, just having kids in the public school system, like you've got teachers that are stretched, administrators that are stretched, mm -hmm. parents are stretched. You're dealing with inflation. You got way more dual income situations, both parents working. And so if you're talking about being a good neighbor, if you're talking about investing in your community, I would just challenge uh, our listeners, man, look for opportunities to get involved in your community and then stick with it for the long haul. Um, you know, one of the greatest um, things that we've ever done as a family is started coaching Pop Warner football when our kids were like seven, eight years old. And then we had the privilege to move up year after year with those kids. And, and now, now they're in high school. And But the relationships that we have with those families, mm -hmm. by God's grace, I, I'm convinced that all of our lives are more enriched and are better because of the time that we put in. And if you're not in sports, it doesn't have to be sports. It could be, uh, it could be drama. It could be the arts. It mm -hmm. could be getting involved in the school and just helping the PTA. I mean, who knows what it is, but man, there's so much value in just getting involved in your community, finding needs, whether it's a coach, whether it's supporting teachers, mm -hmm. then just look around and see what's going on in the community and then get involved. Yeah, it's not far away. It's right there with you. Okay. Any other practical steps? So I just dumped some on you. Any other practical steps that you all would say? I know, Heather, specifically, you, you mentioned, you said you might mention your job later. You don't, but you see a lot of different things. Anything you would offer to us, practical steps? The only thing that I would say, I would just tack on to what you said with, um, instead of showing up with the intention to do a bunch of stuff, yeah. it's just figure out where's a space where you can go and be. Because yeah. truthfully, that's really all people need is just another, they just need other people. And I think one of the implied questions that, uh, whether we say it or not, that's out there in our mind is, well, why should I care? Or I don't feel like I need that. Hmm. And the best thing I can say is, uh, it's not great is, it doesn't really matter whether you feel like you need it or not, you do. Yeah. And so does everyone else. And so if you want to know why you should care and why you should, my challenge would be just to go do it. Yeah. Just go and be, don't try to do anything. Don't, you know, I, obviously I live in the land a little bit of meeting the needs, but um, don't start there because people don't want to be a project. Right. People are people and yeah. they want to be cared about as people. Yeah. Um, and so I would say just go and be and show up. That's good. Yeah. And then just say yes when the opportunity is before you. I mean, nobody has time. Like you just described a whole lot of things that tell us that we don't really have a lot of time, you know, but you have you're never going to have enough time. You just have to be willing to say yes and press pause on the thing that you're working on, the thing that you're doing. Okay. So podcast is hope in real life. I love to end every episode uh, just by asking one question. Uh, what are you most hopeful for in your life right now? Mm. You go first this time. Man, I think I mentioned kids earlier. I'm, I'm just hopeful that the next generation understands like what real community can look like, yeah. you know, and I think all of us are a little concerned about that for them, but you know, it's, it's not so far away. And so I'm hopeful that people will be intentional, man. It is, it's like summertime. It's time to get outside. It's time to do things. And m my hope is that people will make those intentional steps, model it for their kids and show their kids what it looks like. Yeah. You know, in season three, episode three, uh, we had Kristen McDonald on as our guest, and we talked about that, about how mm -hmm. we all need community, but social media in a lot of ways makes us feel like we have more connection than we really do. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be so intentional about just making sure that we actually do interact with other people yeah. in person in real life. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Heather? Uh, mine is deeply personal. I have an 18 year old. We have an 18 year old who just graduated and we're getting to watch him become a young adult. And um, just, 
I'm just hopeful for what that's going to look like for him, for what it is he's about to experience and for how our relationship's going to change um, yeah. and become sweeter. Uh, in spite of my bit of sadness about him moving on, um, it's going to be moving on into something that's going to be, I'm, I'm really hopeful for the, what it's going to become. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you to the both of you for being on uh, this episode. And, and thank you even more for actually being the neighbors that you both are and the way that you invest in your community. It's beautiful to see. It's inspiring. And so, um, man, on behalf of, I feel like our, our whole community, <laughs> thank you for what you both do. Uh, Hope and Real Life family, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Everything that we talked about, um, The Art of Neighboring by Jay Pathak, uh, Neighborliness mm -hmm. by David Docuson. David Docuson. We'll have that down in the show notes. We'll have the link to the episode with Kristen McDonald that we talked about. So all that will be there. Hey, listen, if this content has been valuable for you, or if maybe you've got a small group of folks, or just... Uh, people from your HOA, who knows that you want to work together to build a bit more community together, uh, share this episode. All right. The world needs people that are going to be intentional about building community so that we can experience the hope and love that all of us desperately need. So take an action step. You never know the difference that you can make by sharing a bit of hope. Heather and Sean, once again, thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you, Jason. All right. Hope in real life. Love you all. If we can do anything for you or if you have any comments, we'd love to hear what those are. We will catch you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hope in Real Life podcast. If this content was valuable for you, don't forget, like, subscribe, share. You never know how important it could be to bring a little hope into someone else's life. Uh, there's even a place here for you to comment. We would love to hear from you and hear your feedback. Until next time, let's keep sharing hope.